endeavor to swear as infrequently as is humanly possible in this vlog, as evidently the gibbering apologensia that have since arrayed in knee-jerk support of Eidos Montreal's asinine decision to bring back the character of Garrett in Thief 4, while simultaneously dispensing with a man whose performance accounts for well over 90% of what makes the character who he is in the first place, Evidently to spoil their trousers at the merest utterance of vilest profanity and use the reposed F-bomb as an excuse to write off the argument of the mouthpiece who delivered it. But I don't want that to be misinterpreted as me acquiescing to their small-minded pablum. Look, my past and future vlogs will continue to contain more F-bombs than a Dennis Leary tax audit like always, but I'll say this up front. Look, ill-mannered and profane truth is still truth. You can cower behind propriety and cosmetic minutia all you want. You can attempt to marginalize the individual that generated it, and, and, you know, by God, Eidos Montreal is certainly giving it the old college try, but we see through you like used Neutrogena. Eidos Montreal needs to learn one very important thing. Yes, it's important to learn from your failures, but it can be twice as important to learn from your successes. I am of the firm belief that Eidos Montreal wholeheartedly misunderstood and mistook the success of Deus Ex Human Revolution. It was marketing, yes, it was word of mouth and quality of product and every other thing, flashiness of style, yes, yes, and yes. Equally important to me, though, the reason positive word of mouth spreads so vociferously throughout the gaming public, the reason fans continue to look back on Eidos Montreal's inaugural effort with warm-hearted regard and reverence, it's because Deus Ex Human Revolution bucked an awful lot more trends than it signed on for. Yes, we had flashy contextual third-person takedowns. Look, yes, that, in my opinion, that was a transparent attempt to get 10-year-olds to buy the game. But for every adult brain modern concession, there was a blast from the past that took its place. The, the fact the game has an actual inventory, for example. I remember being blown away by that fact. Virtually no modern releases give the player an actual inventory, let alone an upgradable one. The, the absolute... Absence of quick time events, the ability to shut off glowy condescending HUD elements, the inclusion of a fledged out uh, hacking mini game in lieu of a magic like hack button from Deus Ex 1. Look, even early on, even after early trailers, trailers of this game left a trepidatious Deus Ex fanbase in their wake, Deus Ex Human Revolution was broadly and positively defined by what it kept. We only have one trailer and one terribly written Game Informer article, and Thief is already a game that is most broadly defined by what it lacks. Twice as many core elements of Thief have been removed than in its counterpart across the hall, and at least at this stage, preposterously few have been retained. The disgusting fact that Steven Russell was actually passed over for the role he not only defined, but if his work in Skyrim is any indication, remains 100% capable of delivering with aplomb. When I started out in this business, I wasn't really interested in the guild or being a thief speaks far more about the game than just that Garrett got a voice box transplant from Jason Statham. It isn't just a question of cosmetics or personal taste, whatever the shrieking contrarians would have you believe in order to more easily sweep the entire conflict under the proverbial rug. Give them a chance, they shout. It's just a different voice, they scream. Romano Arzari seems like a cool dude. I agree, Romano's a cool cat, highly charismatic. Let him sell ShamWows, because it isn't just one character we're talking about here either. Stephen Russell was the voice of quite nearly half the characters in the Everlemon series! I mean, Father Karras, the deranged mechanist priest and antagonist of Thief 2, Benny, the half-wit guard, whose performance essentially defined enemy AI in Thief, and in a literal sense physically dictated the game's playstyle. These Kaffers have no respect for such Beautiful things! Half the Hammerites in Thief the Dark Project, the waifish boy servants you encounter at random intervals throughout the series, and dozens of other just contextual bit parts who threw overheard conversations, inner monologues, cutscenes, and pre-mission briefings act in concert to delineate the greater tapestry of the world that comprises all things Thief. The man's voice and tone are inextricably woven through the very fabric of the entire series. Everything from narrative to level design relies on the strength of his performance. Look, 
Danny Smith, the project lead on Deadly Shadows and level designer for Thief 1 and 2, gave an interview last year explaining that during the development of Thief 1 and 2, entire sections of levels might be changed or augmented based purely on fitting in a new conversation or sardonic quip that Stephen Russell had generated in the studio that morning. No need for alarm, ladies. Just passing through. They giddily plug that sound file into the game, and at that moment, the entire composition of the level might physically change due entirely to the strength of Mr. Russell's vocal performance. A strength I don't believe his replacement has, as evidenced by lackluster readings like this. I don't kill without thought, or a good reason, and I certainly don't take payment for it. Eidos Montreal has made a concerted effort of repeatedly claiming that they intend to, and let's dust off the air quotes here for posterity, remain true to the heart of the Thief series. But there's one small problem, and it is imperative that you absorb and process this fact. It is 100% impossible to remain true to the heart of this series in narrative, in tone, in atmosphere, and in actual physical gameplay without casting Steven Russell as Garrett. It's not just a voice. It's one of those all-important pillars of the core thief experience you've so hurriedly paid lip service to during every one of those umpty developer interviews we've all seen on the subject. Prove it wasn't mere lip service and consider the broader implications of this abhorrent decision. There's a petition to bring back Steven Russell as Garrett, a petition which has been blatantly censored by Eidos Montreal at every turn. No thread on the Thief 4 forums discussing its existence goes undeleted, no Facebook post linking to it remains intact, no YouTube comment discussing it has more than an hour tops in which to exist. But here's one public forum where it's more than welcome. As such, it's linked in the description box below. And before the inevitable chorus of querulous homunculi emerges from the primordial lagoon to shriek, a few thousand signatures on the internet isn't going to change anything. Welcome to the world of the immutably self-evident. As with most petitions, this is more about principle than function. It's not to say change this or die, it's to illustrate a commercial imperative for Eidos Montreal. A game that's next-gen exclusive, with a smaller consumer base to draw from, a hostile retail market, the slowest next-gen console adoption rate in history, and five years of prohibitively expensive development time to pay for at its rear cannot afford to have the kind of negative word of mouth this sort of decision cultivates at its front. I'm Razorfist. Godspeed!